Hello and welcome back to Medium Rare. My name is Rag Reynolds and today we have four topics to touch on, so let's just jump right into them. But before we do, I would like to encourage you to check out my Twitter, check out my Instagram, and if you feel like supporting the channel, check out my Patreon. Links to all of these things, as always, are in the description down below. Now, it's been a couple of weeks since I uploaded a regular Medium Rare video. I was away for a family birthday. My laptop also decided to blow up on me. The charger stopped working, so now I have a new PC set up, and uh, hopefully this all goes much better from here on. I'm definitely going to have to work on this lighting arrangement. Anyway, in my absence, there have been many, many stories that I have not had a chance to cover. And that's why today a couple of these stories are maybe a few days old or I'm a little bit behind in the news. But I still think it's important to talk about these things. So the first thing we're talking about today is Russia has been banned from world sporting events. Russia has been handed a four-year ban from all major sporting events by the World Anti-Doping Agency. This means that the Russian flag and anthem will not be allowed at events such as the Tokyo 2020 Olympics and Paralympics and football's 2022 World Cup in Qatar. However, athletes who can prove they are untainted by the doping scandal will be able to compete under a neutral flag. Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev said that the ban was part of chronic anti-Russian hysteria. It is obvious that significant doping problems still exist in Russia. I mean our sporting community, he said. This is impossible to deny. WADA's executive committee made the unanimous decision to impose the ban on Russia in a meeting in Switzerland on Monday. It comes after Russia's anti-doping agency was declared non-compliant for manipulating laboratory data handed over to investigators in January 2019. So obviously the Russian government aren't very happy about this. I'm sure the Russian people in large are not happy about this. That their country is not going to be able to be represented on the world stage in some of the biggest sporting events that we're going to see over the next four years. And that includes the Olympics. Some athletes might be okay with the fact that they can still go and compete under a neutral flag if they are found to have been untainted but there's still something about not being able to represent your country and that sort of pride and the nationalism behind that that I'm sure these guys are not going to be happy about. But the widespread response does seem to be quite positive to this. It seems as though people think this is just one good step towards a better future in all of sports. The use of performance enhancing drugs is very very common across lots of sports especially at that very high level. So personally, I do find it to be a little bit joyful, a little bit good to see that finally some people are having to face the consequences of their actions. But hey, let me know what you think about this in those comments down below. And now the next thing we're talking about oh, is Jessica Yaniv. Okay, I've covered Jessica Yaniv in the past. I've done a couple of videos. Jessica Yaniv, very, very much a notorious child undesirable at this point. I'm using the word undesirable rather than the, the P word. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Jessica Yaniv is back in the news after YouTuber Blair White uploaded a new video titled Jessica Yaniv is back and it's bad. In this video, Blair goes on to describe how she has seen videos of underage fans of hers who have come forward because Jessica Yaniv has gotten on a video call with them touching themselves, moaning and the moaning is Blair White's name. This whole thing, it, it really gives me the creeps to talk about. Definitely not a pleasant situation. On Yaniv's Twitter, they had posted, So a gynecologist office that I got referred to literally told me today that we don't serve transgender patients. And me being me, I'm shocked and confused and hurt. Are they allowed to do that? Legally? Isn't that against the college practices? And, oh, people were not happy with this. People were not happy with Jessica. We saw, for example, Blair, who we're just speaking about. She replied to this tweet saying, you don't go to a gynecologist if you don't have a vag. You don't go to a repair shop if you don't have a car. Stop trying to bully people into touching your privates. And in Blair's video, she did make the very good point that this situation is very, very similar to what we saw with Jessica Yaniv before going after waxing salons. In that situation, Jessica Yaniv was going around different waxing places trying to get themselves waxed. And when these people would refuse to wax them because they found out that Jessica Yaniv had male genitalia rather than the female genitalia that they are used to waxing, Jessica Yaniv started filing complaints, took to social media and started trying to get these businesses 
closed down. And Jessica actually cost a lot of these businesses a lot of money because of this. And yes, it does seem like this is what Jessica is going for at this point as well. Definitely 100% trying to go for these people to try and bully them into doing something that they're not comfortable with. Another thing to note here with Jessica Yaniv is that Jessica Yaniv is also currently facing charges in Canada for possession of a weapon. That weapon being a taser that Jessica flaunted on Blair White's live stream. Anyway, what do you think about this whole Jessica Yaniv thing? Uh, me personally, I'm honestly just disgusted every time I hear Jessica Yaniv's name. I'm, I honestly do not know where this is going to go at this point. Jessica Yaniv just needs to be in prison. Jessica Yaniv needs to be stopped and put away, away from kids. Just keep this person away from society, please. If, if you disagree, please let me know why in the comments down below, or if you agree, also let me know. And our next story today is about the new YouTube harassment policy. This is one that is quite controversial. Some people like the premise of it, others really despise it. Where do I lie on it? Well, let me read it to you first. Many of you have told us we need to do a better job preventing harassment on YouTube, so we consulted with a wide array of creators, experts, and organizations to update our harassment policy, which changed today. Here's what it covers. Stricter stance on abusive language, prolonged attacks that insult a person's intrinsic attributes, such as race, physical traits, sexual orientation, religion, or gender. Note this will not affect our openness for a broad range of artistic expression and debate on important issues. Stricter stance on threats, not only explicit threats, but also implicit ones, referencing physical violence. Included here are threats that might not cite a specific time or place, but that may feature weapons or simulated violence. Consequences for harassment patterns. Because harassment can be more than a single video, repeated behavior like maliciously targeting the same individual across multiple videos or comments can lead to penalties like YouTube partner program suspension, strikes, or even termination. Comment moderation. By year's end, most channels will be enabled with a tool that automatically holds potentially inappropriate comments for review. You can always opt out, but note that early adopters saw a 75% reduction in flagged comments on their channels. Now this is a big, big deal. People are not happy with how vague a lot of this is. People are not happy with the wording of a lot of these updates. For me personally, something that really stood out there was the mention of simulated violence. Like, simulated violence? Really? I mean, what, what does this apply to? Does this mean video game violence? So if I was to, say, launch up a wrestling game, and in those games you can create characters of yourself. I've done a joke video of this on another channel. Uh, on YouTube where I did a video called Fighting PewDiePie and in this video I created myself, I created PewDiePie and I made a whole comedy video of Fighting PewDiePie. Would that now be classed as simulated violence and as a threat and I would have that video removed for that? Is that how that's going to work? And now since this has been announced and since this policy has been put into place, lots and lots of creators have seen videos be deleted from their YouTube channels. Now I do want to point out that YouTube is not striking channels for these videos that are being taken down. So it seems that videos that were uploaded prior to this policy being updated are kind of, they can be taken down still and they are being taken down, but they will not result in your channel receiving a strike. You will not be punished for that. So it seems like you're only going to be punished if you were to upload a video tomorrow violating these guidelines. Among the people who had a video removed from their channel included iDubs, who is very famous for his Content Cop series. And the specific video that was removed was his Content Cop on former YouTube creator Leafy. And now this is a huge deal, because this Content Cop video is perhaps the most viewed commentary video ever on the YouTube platform. This video had over 10 million views. It is probably the biggest most successful commentary style video on YouTube and that has been removed. Now this video was a video that contained lots of constructive criticism, lots of genuine facts, lots of criticism, lots of comedy, jokes. There was a little bit of roasting going on. iDubbbz was saying that Leafy doesn't have a chin, where's his chin? It was all in good fun though. And this video has been deemed to be harassment and has been taken down. And now Leafy actually made a little bit of a statement about this in Leafy 
doesn't even agree with this being taken down and he was the subject to this video. iDubbbz also talked about this in a tweet, he posted a tweet on his Twitter saying download your favourite bullying vids before YouTube takes them down. And honestly I do find this very concerning, it has been worried about widely for quite a while now that YouTube will be cracking down on a lot of commentary style videos where people are talking about other YouTubers or calling them out on things. And this policy can certainly help in some situations, but I'm I'm really quite concerned about the abuse and the vagueness of this policy. It seems as though it's just not going to be possible to talk about other people and give your opinion about them. Another thing I would like to point out though is why is it that we have all these YouTubers who are having their videos taken down for say roasting another YouTuber? Yet, we have late night hosts like Jimmy Kimmel or uh, Conan O'Brien or whoever else the late night show host is that has their YouTube channel and they're posting their videos. And in these videos, they're poking fun at people, they're roasting people. Why are their videos not being taken down? Why do they get to keep doing what they're doing? Why is that not harassment? Why is it harassment if I go and roast another YouTuber but it's not harassment when someone like Jimmy Kimmel decides to roast another celebrity. To me, that is a clear double standard and YouTube just deciding that they want to focus more on the brands and the celebrities than they do on their creators. Anyway, as I said, I'm very concerned by all of this, but please let me know what you think about this in those comments down below. And the last thing we're talking about today is just a little story, and this is because I was just on Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. You can check this out at his YouTube channel. I was on the Chris Hansen show to talk about the Onision forums. If you're not aware, I uploaded a video not too long ago about the Onision forums. It's an hour long. I do encourage you to go check that out. So I went on Chris Hansen's show to discuss the Onision forums in length. During the show, Chris Hansen also made the announcement that yes, there has been an investigation ongoing with Onision, the FBI are looking into him, but Chris also announced during our interview that the FBI have actually had Onision on a list for quite some time now. Personally, I just found that to be quite a little interesting bit of news. Anyway, I do encourage you to go check out my interview with Chris Hansen and also check out my hour-long forums video that I uploaded a few weeks back. And that is where I'm going to end today's video. So please, as per usual, let me know what you thought about any and all of the subjects we discussed in today's video. I am going to be trying to improve this setup a little bit. I mean, I'm looking at myself and my camera right now. It does seem a bit dark. I think it's largely because of this monitor setup I have here. I've got a couple of monitors here that I didn't used to have before and I think the light from these are kind of shining on me. Maybe I'm going to need to turn these off and uh, go back to using my phone for notes or something because I do think this is kind of messing up the balance of the room. I'll, I'll work it out. I'll work it out. Anyway, until next time, my name is Rag Reynolds and this was Medium Rare.